no, 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 this is a sensor, and this is a new type of sensor. This is an RTD. This is a resistive uh, temperature sensor. And it's a special kind of sensor for people who usually do high temperature sensing. Usually you're going to go with a thermocouple. And we have K-type thermocouples in the store and um, multiple thermocouple amplifiers that you can use. But if you want to have something more precise and accurate, these are two different things, um, Thermocouples, they're, they're neither very precise nor accurate. They're usually off by a couple degrees. They need to be calibrated, and then your precision isn't going to be much better than a couple of degrees. In comparison, this type of sensor, which is a platinum 100 ohm sensor, is a very precise, very accurate. This is almost like the standard method of measuring temperatures when you need high precision and high accuracy inside the sensor is a little strip of platinum um, that is exactly 100.0 ohms, 0 .00 ohms, I think, in uh, exactly zero degrees centigrade. So it is a very well calibrated resistor, and the um, the resistance changes with temperature and. Uh, there's multiple algorithms you can use to. It's not linear, but it's very easy to use that resistance change to convert that to a, te a temperature change. And so it's good for large ranges of temperatures because it's, it's mostly linear. Um, this particular jacketing is good for up to 550 degrees C. It can go negative. It's, it's, there's no inherent uh, reason you can't go in a you know, wide temperature range because um, you're dealing with just a resistance that changes. As long as you can measure that resistance you know, about a meter away, you can have a good um, resistance meter you can measure temperature changes. Okay. And um, this is a sensor that is a it's class A sensor, so it's like, you know, I think at least 1% or better. I can't remember off the top of my head which what class A is. It's either 1% or 0.1%. And it comes with three prongs. And the reason it comes with three prongs is kind of an interesting reason. Most thermistors, which is a type of thermistor, most thermistors only have two connections, one for either side of the resistor, and you basically put... Um, a current through it and then measure the voltage difference. That's pretty much how it works. Um, however, when you're dealing with something that's so precise and has such small changes, you know, one or half an ohm resistance can, can be measured, you want to make sure that the wire itself isn't part of that measurement, especially since you might be putting quite a bit of current in to make a, a nice large voltage. So what you do is you have a third wire and you force the current through two wires. I think the two red wires are the forcing current ones. You measure it, whichever one's 100 ohms. And then the third wire, what you do is you measure the voltage across those two red forcing wires and across one of the red wires and the sense wire, the blue wire. And then that will tell you the voltage difference of one wire. And then you multiply that by two and you subtract it. Okay. So basically it's accounting for the difference between the wire resistances, which, which can add up when you're doing, again, this precision uh, sensing. We'll have an amplifier that does all this in about a week or so. Okay. Uh, we didn't get that in the store this week, but it's coming soon. We want to get this in the store okay. now. So if you're like, oh, but I need an amplifier, hold off. You know, we'll, we'll get you an amplifier as well. But this is a really nice sensor for people who want to do uh, scientific research where you want to have very good repeatability, accuracy, and precision. Um, this is pretty good. It's good as it's going to get for the for the amount of money that you're putting in. I mean, of course, you can always yeah, get yeah. more precise, but for you know about 15 bucks, this is like an excellent, excellent temperature sensor. It's a nice stainless steel tip as well. Um, great for those uses when a thermocouple is not precise enough, but you want more range than our you know precision I squared C sensors, okay. which of course can't go beyond 100 degrees C. That was an excellent explanation. Where can you even listen to things like this live on the internet? Only on the show. The yeah. only thing is I can't remember if it's the two red wires or which which one is which. Maybe check the product page because it's it's one or the other. Or of course five chat rooms. They're gonna they're on it. I'm sure they'll come. Well, you can measure the resistance with your multimeter. And again, yeah. you know the forcing wire and the sense wire. It's the same wire. It's just that you you remove that delta. Yeah. Um, sometimes you can get sensors with four wires. 
honestly, it's not going to be different than two times one wire. You know what I mean? You'd have two force and two cents. But in my opinion, it's like if all of your wires are the same gauge and length, you're yeah. not going to gain anything by having another wire, which is basically a duplicate of the third one. So I'm, I'm a three-wire kind of girl. Okay. But uh, if people demand it, we'll carry a four-wire version. Okay. This is make do. Sometimes you just gotta make do. This is kind of interesting. I had a, I didn't I actually didn't put this in the store, but yeah. but I think you did, and I think you like this. This is yeah, a cardboard there. construction kit, mm -hmm. um, and check the videos on the site. Basically, it's these really large screws, and yep. they're they have a, a big teeth. See the big tooth on it, and it's good for corrugated cardboard. And there's a little um, like a cardboard saw, and then a wrench that helps you attaches in so basically the idea is you can get all this recycled cardboard cardboard from the trash all those amazon prime boxes you've got you cut them up and you can draw on them and you can shape them into robots yeah. or puppets or maybe toys or maybe yeah. a little house that you can live in when i was a kid that's all I, I built tons and tons of cardboard structures and then i would um run strings around everywhere um and it would, i was the only one who could get through it yeah you know what is like the most fun th toy in the world it's not like a PlayStation, it's not an Xbox, it's not an iPad. It's those fridge refrigerator oh, boxes. Too, yeah. Refrigerator boxes are amazing when yeah. you're a kid because you're like, this is enormous. Yeah, and they're like really it. rugged. You can yeah. cut them and, and decorate them. So this would be a tool you could use if you wanted to like construct something with that cardboard. Yeah. And you get a bunch of them and then it's kind of like a fun way to, I mean, you can, you can kind of get by with um, fasteners, like stud fasteners, mm -hmm. but they're not as nice and you know reusable as these. Okay. Now, uh, sort of big news for the folks who didn't get an AdaBox subscription, we have it in the store. The only difference is it doesn't come with the pin, um, and this is just AdaBox, just to get you going on the Feather ecosystem. So do check out the product page. We asked uh, what folks wanted after we launched the AdaBox subscription service, and many of them said, "I want to be able to get that one from the past." So we have that available now. Yep, it doesn't have as many of the extras or bonuses yeah. and the free shipping. This is why you want to subscribe, right? If you subscribe, you get, you get all of these extra Anyways, goodies. This is intro in the feather world. But maybe you missed it. Maybe you, I don't know what happened. Maybe you forgot. Yeah, this whatever. is your chance. You can still you can still get it. Yeah. Okay. Next up. This is exciting. This is a revision, but this is a pretty big revision. Big so I'm deal. going to mention it. Sometimes we just revise a, a product and change the silk screen or tweak it a little bit just to make it a little bit better. We don't talk about it, but this is a, a fairly big revision. Yeah, so we squoze the Metro down into Metro Mini. Yeah, we did that, but then we made the Metro Mini even better. So if you go to the big picture, yeah. Oh, this is the previous photo. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah okay. that's okay. Maybe right. we don't have the. Can you go to this, the next one after this? I'm going to go this one. No, this is still the old one, but it's okay. I, I'll also talk about it. All right. uh, so go back one. I one got for. these too. I don't know. No, I think I think helpful. maybe you grabbed the photos before they you're were updated. Helpful. All right, I'm Sorry. not being helpful. It, no, you're you're wonderful. You're wonderful, okay. and it's okay. Okay. Not a big deal. Well, let's talk about the past. Let's talk about <laughs> what, what, you, what is what's the different. Future. This is the old one. What's the different? No, I just want to point out because see that there's this chip, not the at Mega 328, which is kind of like a diamond shape orientation. The one over here says FTDI. It was the FT 230. 1x USB to serial converter chip, which is a lovely chip, but we get the Scilab CP2104 chip nowadays, and we've been using it in the Huzzah, and we also got a breakout of it. And I don't want to say it's a better chip, but it's kind of a better chip. Okay, live it's, editing right here. I did it. Done. Dude, I'd I, do it live. <sighs> so you saw that we just swapped that in instead of the FT. 231, we now have the CP2104. The CP2104, it has slightly different driver requirements, but they're just as good. The CP21, it can go much faster. It gives us extremely high speeds. It can do weird speeds very well. It has drivers for every operating system. It's very well supported. Um, I personally think it's a little more reliable than the FT231X, but most importantly, it's a buck cheaper. And because it's a dollar cheaper, guess what we did? What? We lowered the price on the Metro Mini yeah. by $2.50. So you can now get a Metro Mini for even less, but it works just the same. All you have to make sure is just grab the drivers. We link to them. Okay. And as far as you can tell, all the LEDs work the same. It works with their Arduino IDE. It's wonderful. It's just expensive. We also added in a 3.3 volt regulator, a little bit of extra space, so you get a better regulator now. Um, it's all good. It's all better. 
It's yeah. the new Metro Mini. That's revised. I but see Scott said Scilabs does better FTDI than FTDI. A little bit. Yeah. But um, basically, they gave us they gave us an excellent pricing on the chips, and given that they're otherwise equivalent, I would rather provide people yeah. good or better quality with a lower price. Yeah. Everyone wins. All right, and that's what the new thing is. I'm like the John King magic wall guy here. I know you totally. Okay. Moved Next it up. Around. Next up. All right. You get two thousand yeah. one hundred okay. four electrical volts. The star of the show tonight, besides you, lady, it is this. The star of the show it today is a new feather wing. I know y'all loved all those feather wings. We had one feather wing a week yes. for so many weeks. We took a little bit of a break, and we came back and did the Ethernet feather wing. And I took a little bit more of a break. Now we're back in action with the TFT feather. You know what's funny is now because we have so many more feathers, I have to make sure that they're, you know whatever I make is compatible with all of them. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit more effort. Um, so this is a 2.4 inch, 320 by 240, 16-bit color display, and it works with any and all feathers. So whether you have the Feather 32U4 or the M0 or the Wicked Feather or the Feather Fona or the ESP266 or maybe even the future ESP32, it'll mm -hmm. work. Um, this is a fully assembled uh, feather wing. It's a little bit bigger than those feather wings because so the feather goes on the back, but you get all of the joy of the AD, uh, Adafruit ILI GFX 9341 GFX library, uh, plug and play, and you get an SD card holder, and you get a touch screen, and you get an on off switch because we had a little bit of space and a reset switch. It's kind of like an all in one ready to go. And then since your feather has built in battery charging, you can make a little portable display. Yeah. Like, yeah. thank you, like on the overhead. Um, this is just, it's just resetting every few seconds. Mm -hmm. But this is um, using the ESP8266 Featherwing. Let's get that nice and zoomed in. You, you, you can kind of do it. Here you go. Um, and then you have a battery attached to it. And then wow. it's got the touch demo here. So you can That's touch powerful. screen. And um, the image is stored on an SD card. And then you can turn the whole thing off with the enable pin hmm. using this. Oh, I forgot to say, it also works with the Teensy 3 feather, except for the on-off switch, because it, there's no enable pin on the Teensy, which I well, maybe I'll revise. But um, for now, it does work with all feathers except for the on-off switch. Depending on the feather, some of them don't have an enable pin. But other than that, you know, you can have a, a lovely little display. Turn it back on. Beep. And then let me get the other demo here so we've got another demo here maybe i'll unplug this one plug this one in what is this demo is this even running a demo i don't remember you have so many demos this might be oh you know what i think this is a fresh esp never mind i forgot to program it well, let's pretend it was programmed but um Picture it can do snow. um it can, uh, yes, it's a, it's a drawing of snow. Um, but yeah, you can uh, have graphics, text uh, icons, you know, there's like demos that you can have like the weather display on your ESP8266 or a touch interface or oh, what have you. Wi-Fi device, that's cool. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, that was... Yeah. What's nice is it just plugs right in. Just plugs in. Very easy, and then you even get another row of headers here, so you can plug this into like a breadboard or something if you want. I like that all this stuff just works. It really it takes a little bit of effort, but it just works. Works with all the feathers, so very handy.